water at the bottom of the shaft, which presents the possibility of a drowning happening. Even if you survive the fall, you may not be able to get out of the water at the bottom of a shaft. If you have a horizontal drift or adit that's partially flooded, it could hide a deep hole in the floor. So you could be walking along in relatively shallow water and all of a sudden find yourself in water up to your neck and unable to get out. You have to assume that they're not, they're not at all usable. Uh, and if you go down a ladder, it may be the upper part of the ladder is pretty good and you get down 30 or 40 feet and then all of a sudden the steps start breaking out from underneath of you. Or you get down to the bottom and then you try to come back out and the steps start breaking as you try to go up and you can't get back out. Uh, again, from a safety standpoint, uh, you never trust ladders and you surely don't trust ropes because if they've been sitting for any length of time, they're just not reliable. Well, they didn't protect those winds as oftentimes. Somebody walks in an abandoned mine, they're typically looking up at the back or the rib. Most of the deaths that we have in abandoned mines are from people walking in, looking at the back or the rib, and falling to their death down a wind. This is about as near as we can come to the to the underground hazard presented by winds. This is the intersection of a little cross cut and an old shaft. Nothing to indicate that this drop off is here. You were going along there looking at the light, looking at that face, and we're paying attention. You'd be 30 feet down there in that water. The structures themselves can be hazards. That have been sitting out in the weather for many decades. You can be climbing around on some of the collapsed head frames. Um, the wood can be rotten. You can climb around on some of the frames around the mines themselves, and they can look very secure, but they can collapse at any time. These decay and become weaker over time, could collapse under the additional weight of a person attempting to climb onto these structures. Well, there's a risk any time you're around an abandoned mine, such as roof collapsing on you, because they used dynamite and that cracked the rock. And the miners put a post to hold that roof up. But over the time that the mine is abandoned, those posts tend to rot. And that roof will fall down someday and kill whoever's underneath it, if it's a human being or whether it's a chipmunk. Bad air cannot be detected by human senses in many instances. Many poisonous gases cannot be smelled. First symptoms of oxygen deprivation is you lose your common sense. And by the time that somebody would be aware that something is wrong, you pass out, your head goes right down into very low oxygen, and you're dead. A lot of deaths in abandoned mines happen because of low oxygen situation. Nitroglycerin is a very unstable compound. As dynamite ages, the nitroglycerin tends to come out of the filler material and to collect in pools underneath the dynamite box. And so disturbing this pile of dynamite could lead to an explosion. There's something you don't like to find. There's a whole box of old dynamite. Judging from the cardboard container, I'd guess that was from the 1950s. Good possibility that that dynamite is still highly explosive. Very, very dangerous underground hazard. That's something you don't want to fool with. There certainly are explosives uh, that you can run across. The ones that actually scare me the worst are the ones that you can't see, and those are the blasting caps, which are little thin cylinders and if you don't know what they are and you step on one, it might very well go off. 
A blasting cap an inch and a half long and a quarter of an inch in diameter is enough to blow your hand completely off. There are people that go on abandoned mines that don't, that don't have any knowledge about old explosives would pick up a blasting cap as a curiosity item, perhaps drop it in a pocket and wind up with serious injury or death. That's happened a lot of times. Probably the most insidious danger in mines, old abandoned mines, are uh, simply running into poisonous snakes. And down in this country, of course, it's always rattlesnakes. Uh, in the summertime in particular, as it gets really hot and the snakes get uncomfortable, they'll move into shaded areas, uh, which can be tunnels or, or small holes in the ground that, uh, that are on the mining sites. And so if you're not paying attention as you go into a tunnel or you're going into some sort of an open mining feature, but one that has shade in it, the next thing you'll know you can get into poisonous snakes. So that snakes are always an issue uh, anywhere around mining sites. Well, getting lost is a possibility. Light is a critical thing. Simple tasks like moving 25 feet become incredibly complex. Now oftentimes what will happen is when you lose light underground, you panic. Lots of the deaths that have happened have been for that reason. People have been underground, they've lost their light, the tendency is to panic, they run, run into something or run and fall down something. Definite possibility there. Even the most highly trained and cautious are exposed to life-threatening risk by the multiple hazards one could encounter in an abandoned mine. The men that are involved in work uh, around uh, hazardous mine openings are extensively trained and th this is not something that uh, you'd want to do without the appropriate training and without the appropriate safety equipment. Uh, entering mine workings and working on uh, mine closings can be extremely hazardous. Now I've got a hard hat on. And that hard hat would protect me from a rock about that size if it fell maybe 10 feet. If that falls 200 feet, it's going to go through that hard hat with a sickening crunch. If a rock this size falls, the hard hat's not going to make any difference. That rock is going to break my neck. It behooves all of us to identify these structures and to safeguard them and to return these lands to some kind of a useful, self-sustaining uh, facility. The Abandoned Mine Land program utilizes a variety of techniques to close and safeguard abandoned mines. These techniques include backfilling, polyurethane foam or puff, wildlife compatible closures, cable nets, and other structural closures. Backfilling with surrounding waste rock or other material is a simple technique used when there are no wildlife habitat issues or historic preservation issues. If there are wildlife issues, such as bats living in a mine feature, a bat-compatible structure will be built. They allow bats to fly in and out of a mine, yet prevent people from entering. Puff, or polyurethane foam, is used in two different instances. One is to set a culvert, which is generally part of a bat-compatible closure. Puff is also used to close a deep mine when there is either not enough waste rock to fill the shaft or there are historic preservation issues that prevent using the waste rock at a mine. A puff plug is constructed to adhere to the rock below the opening of a shaft and is usually from 5 to 15 feet thick. It is covered with dirt to protect it from the sun's UV rays. This is a very strong and effective closure for a shaft. Cable netting or steel mesh is used for large irregular openings and other techniques are not feasible. In this case, we're using Puff to install a culvert which will allow bats to continue to work around the area but seal the area between the culvert and the open rock space so that other uh, rock uh, sloughing or caving can't occur and no other entry other than through the bat gate can, uh, can be achieved. And uh, the top of the culvert will be covered with a grate which will allow the bats or other raptors to enter the workings but uh, keep out uh, people and small dogs or other mammals. Puff is polyurethane foam and it's it's uh, two, two parts of synthetic resins when mixed together expand about 15 times their normal volume and they're used for sealing irregular mine openings and making permanent uh, seals. In other cases puff might be used in a deep shaft 
where you want to preserve the integrity of the lower workings of the shaft, but you want to safeguard the collar from anybody that might fall in. You might use a puff plug in a thousand foot shaft and then put uh, dirt and capping on top of that as a permanent cap for the, for the shaft. Sealing off abandoned mines is an effective way to safeguard, but in many areas, native wildlife has taken up residence in these mine workings.